Hello, amateurs, and welcome back to our Six Nations series. And I've got Elko with me again today. There he is. Elko, how are you? TC, I've, I've had better mornings. I'm a little bit uh, bit hungover. I was at a, a, a boozy rugby lunch yesterday, which was great fun. Great fun to be back uh, amongst the brethren. <laughs> well, I'm a little bit weary as well, but we're going to do our best to bring the energy. Tell me a little bit about the uh, boozy lunch. <clears throat> Is there any sort of special guests of honour or anything like yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Effingham and Leatherhead uh, were doing a sort of, uh, it was their first ever city lunch, which um, those of you in the UK will know, but it, it's a thing a lot of the, the sort of uh, London and surrounding clubs do to, to try and um, raise money. So you'll get lots of uh, rugby uh, noses from from different clubs come in and um, yeah, have a have a nice lunch, a um, bit of steak, a bit of wine and, and, and do some auctions. So they, they had um, Johnny Gould was the, the compare who's, who's, one of the best auctioneers you'll ever see. He 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 eked as much money as he could for the club. Really, really good. Very funny. Um, and then Ugo Monia was was guest speaker. Um, so we got to do uh, a bit of a Q and A uh, with him. Um, and actually, the the England team was announced, um, um, uh, sort of just before the auction. So it was quite good. Um, and, and he, we got sort of an initial reaction from from Ugo um, on the selection as well. But yeah, some really good questions. And he was. Um, he was really, really good. To be fair, uh, lifted the, the 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 sort of TV kind of because uh, you know, obviously you've got to mind your p's and q's and stuff like that. But he was uh, a lot more sort of bloke in a pub, I guess. What we want to do here, and um, yeah, really good, uh, very nice chap. Amazing. Okay, that sounds about cool. And we are here today to talk about the <clears throat> Italy England game and the selections that have happened. So did did Ugo have any kind of insights? Any sort of takeaways that you remember? Um, no, I mean, no, no real surprises there. I, th I think obviously, uh, and we'll get on to the number 10. He, he felt, he felt it was the right decision of what, what they've, what they've done. Um, and spoke about sort of the, the Northampton Saints sort of DNA through, through the team, but no, no, no real surprises. I think, I think we kind of almost got it right as well in terms of selection and things like that, but, um, uh, very confident of a win though. <laughs> Right. OK, interesting. OK, with that in mind, let's get into uh, the Italy team. There it is. This is what the team, Gonzalo Casada's first pick uh, for this match against England, which is Saturday afternoon. What is standing out for you, Elko, in the team that's been selected here? Well, uh, for me, not a lot of standing out as individuals. I don't think that's a that kind of tells us where, where they are, but I don't think that's a bad thing because I think um, th there needs to be a complete team performance. Um, gone are the days of where they just had like a Parisi that you know you'd, you'd, you'd link it all on and, and he'd get MOM every time. Um, and I think the way, the way that they, they can go and beat England um, this weekend is, is, is along those lines of, of working difficulty. I know, um, is it Varney, the, 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 the sub scrum half, who's um. Sort of uh, parents, I think, are, are Italian. Um, he's he's been out in the press today on BBC, sort of saying around, uh, talking it up around how physical their pack needs to be, um, and how they're going to have to take them up on, on front. And obviously, if you've got someone like Negri, who who um, is sort of uh, front and center with with the Netflix show and things like that, and and, and coming through some concussion stuff, which is quite interesting. You know, clearly a guy of his size will need to play extremely well uh, and go after this um, this England pack um, for sure. Um, but yeah, I think uh, sort of uh, they're going to need to have a, a whole performance um, to, to beat this England team. Completely. And the thing that stands out for me is that the best players are still the best players. This looks like a very settled Italian team to me. It's almost yeah. exactly the same that was playing in the championship last year. Varney and, and Alessandro Garbisi at nine half, a kind uh, scrum half, excuse me, are kind of interchangeable in terms of their quality. Um, and it's it's strong throughout the tactically. I would say the interesting selection is probably Tommaso Allen at fullback yeah. um, with his you know extra kicking ability um, and extra uh, putting players in space uh, playmaker kind of ability rather than another like maybe couple two at fullback and a and a winger on the wing. Um, I'd say that's tactically probably the only difference that we're going to see from there. Championship last year when they were running the ball from everywhere. Um, the other thing is a 6-2 split on the bench, six forwards. Um, and again, this is just like a lot of teams now. They seem to have a lot of backs who can play in many different positions. So 
Um, I expect to see a, a fairly fluent, good performance from this Italian team on Saturday. Yeah, and, and I think with, with their new coach there as well, it's, it's, it's interesting that they've got two tens on the park. I think you're right. I think that will that will give both a, a, an extra dimension in terms of kicking, which I think we're probably going to see a, a, a good bit, certainly beginning to settle them down. And then, you know, as, as there's tired bodies on there, um, you know, quite a big English pack, do we see then two, two um, players being able to distribute and, and put, put some of their attacking players into, into space? Um, it's going to be very interesting to see tactically how they... It's it's new for us, right? We don't we don't know. We're not we think we know, but we're not sure how this um you know Casada's gonna get them to play. Yeah, and the other thing I'd like to pick up on is uh Sam Lana on Twitter has been talking recently about the length of kicks to touch and the obviously the further down the pitch that they go, the more likely you are to score tries from them. So if you've got somebody that is a great touch kicker from penalties, I'm talking about mostly, then really they should be the one that's taken the kick to touch. And Pani on the bench for Italy apparently is by far and away Italy's best touch kicker. So if he gets on the pitch towards the end, check out, see if he's the one that's kicking the ball to touch. <coughs> and if he tries from those results at lineouts, uh, that's Sam L stands up on Twitter. Very good stats, man. Uh, if you're into that kind of thing, like I am, um, <laughs> Anything else on Italy, Elko, before we move on to England? Uh, no, just looking forward to seeing Micro Spagno, Spagnola coming on off the bench. <laughs> Good on, Mirko. Thank check. you, Trippi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, watch the previous video if you're not sure what we're talking about there. Um, <clears throat> okay, on to England. And <clears throat> I think it's fair to say there are some surprises in this team. Um, I... I, I Kind of predicted a lot of it, uh, but yeah, there are some surprises. So what stands out for you, Elko? What are you looking at this England side and, and thinking they're going to try and do? Well, I like a lot of it, for for sure. Um, there's some names there that we've we've not seen before, which is exciting. Um, can I start with a negative uh, or, or sort of... Yeah, go, one go I ahead. Don't like? Yeah, so I, I'm not sure about him starting forward. I, I don't, I'm not, like, if you're ever going to do it... Uh, and 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 put in Finn Smith. Now's the time, isn't it? You know, um, well, again, not to be disparaging. It, it's you know you're playing Italy in the first round. Um, you've you've got a load of other Saints in the team with them. I just think it would, would have been a, a great thing to do. And if the wheels come off, and you know uh, Italy come after England, which I think they will, and the the, the crowd in Rome, you know, go go bananas, then. Then you've got to bring. Then you've got to bring a Finn Smith on. Whereas if it's going poorly, then you bring a Ford on. I don't know. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. Ford's awesome, and I, I, but I just think it would have been great to, to have to have Finn, Finn Smith start. And, and does that? It, it's it's a very daring um, selection in in some ways, and some of the other players that we haven't maybe seen from from um, Borthwick before. But you know, his hands were tied um, with the squad he had um, when he took when he took over from Jones. But does this kind of Show that he still is a little bit, you know, on the air, airs on, on the side of caution a little bit. Who knows? Um, but uh, yeah, uh, Dingwall for me is a massive, massive selection. I'm so excited to see this kid play. Um, big old unit. Um, and um, yeah, on the on on the wing, Freeman as well. He's been ripping up trees. Very interesting um, in, in, in the backs there. So, and, and Mitchell's a bit of a surprise because um, I, I know he wasn't training. Um, he's some some infection or something in his leg, but uh, that's an interesting one. And again, it kind of confuses me because you you would have had um, Finn Smith and Mitchell together as a combination who who know each other really well. Um, so you ha you would have had nine, ten, twelve, um, and a winger there. So anyway, uh, let, let's see. I, I still think they'll be they'll be strong enough to to do to do a job. Um, certainly the backs. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree with all the sort of reasons you put, said there for selecting Smith. Um, and I've kind of gone back and forth this week in my mind over it. <clears throat> but overall, I think I would have selected this team pretty much as, as it was. Um, I think that just with Ford, he has been injured, certainly. And he does take a few games to get back and playing. But I just think it's, it's, it's a mark of respect, probably, for this Italian team that um, Borthwick wants to start with his most experienced player in that position. Also, yeah. I think from the sound of it, with the injury to Marcus Smith, with the the uh, infection to Mitchell, it sounds like the halfbacks 
selection has probably wavered several times this week and it's potentially been any one of the three in each position at, at certain points this week. So it sounds like it might have been quite a disruptive week for England. So it'd be interesting to see whether they come out and they look like they're firing from the start or whether it takes them a little bit of time to, to bed in and get into this game. Um, <clears throat> we uh, should certainly notice, the, yeah, the deb- debutant. So uh, Ethan Roots at Blindside, who we spoke about in the previous video, just a big banging physical six. And I just think it suits England's DNA so well to have a proper blindside flanker in there. And I'm excited to see how he goes. What do you make of him, Elko? Yeah, yeah. So, so it's all about stats. I can't remember who, who, who um, I'll, I'll try and find out who it is for later, but uh, uh, the stats on him, on, on Roots, is that he's, he's uh, his rook hitting or rook entries, I think is what they call it, is the highest in, in the Prem. So clearly, you know, uh, work rate massive. We know um, his... You know, DNA is 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 from um, NZ. Um, he's a tough guy. Uh, they breathe him tough in Exeter. Very tough pack. So I'm looking forward to him. I think he'll be banging people. I believe he's a black belt in in uh, jiu-jitsu as well. Um, so um, can can look after himself. Um, so yeah, looking forward to seeing him banging banging some people for sure. Yeah, and I think also that someone else I'd like to pick out on is Chandler Cunning himself <clears throat> on the bench. Yeah. Who's been who's had some good games this year. He's done done well in the Premiership for Harlequins, but he comes in ahead of his teammate, Alex Dombran, who, um, who's, you know, played more games, played more minutes for sure. Uh, he looks like a very... I honestly thought Borthwick had kind of picked him in the squad as almost like an apprentice player without ever expecting to pick him. That clearly was wrong. Sometimes players go into these environments... They get into a, a higher echelon and they just <laughs> rise and rise and rise. And they, they're almost waiting for that next challenge. I sense that's what's happened here with Cunning himself. Yeah, uh, um, twofold. <clears throat> it could also be that Don Brandt just hasn't impressed. And, and I think um, clearly we know that Borthwick has doubts about him as a player. Um, he, he wouldn't have picked him in the Six Nations last year and then dropped him like a stone. Um, for the for the World Cup, so yes, uh, th- th- there's probably two things there. I think couldn't say that I was lucky enough to to see him quite a number of times when when London Irish were still in business and playing in Brentford around the corner from me. And um, he is a class player. I think we said in in the in one of the pods um, looking at the England squad that he's he's very much in a Courtney Laws kind of mould. He 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 lines people up. He goes after people rugby league style in in, in the defensive line, and then he, he can carry as well. And he's had a real Sort of, uh, you know, release of life at, at, at Quinns, and 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 you know, had, has, had, has had to fight for a contract. You know, having having um, having his club um, go bust. So, yeah, he's 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 quality, um, very good player, and I'm looking forward to to seeing him um, go at it as well. And then, of course, uh, the person that's probably taken up as many column inches as anybody in this England selection, Emmanuel Faye Waboso. He's been selected in the number 23 jersey, and I think it's uh, I think it's a good selection. If you're going to go 5-3 on the bench and you've got Kerr and Smith, uh, then then you've got a choice, basically, whether you go for an out-and-out fullback, sort of playmaker fullback, or somebody that's going to bring you absolute gas and finishing power. And I would say it's, it's the latter that England lack in their starting 15, uh, whereas they've got several people who can cover fullback if needs be. So I think Faye Waboso is a very positive selection on the on the bench yeah it's brave um i'm not sure what they do if 13 gets injured um who slides probably maybe dingwall can play 13 i don't know he's quite big um daily i suppose can, can slip in there sorry yeah no they're they're covered but um yeah i mean i am very excited to see this kid play um i think it's a it's it it, it goes on the other side of it that 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 borthwick maybe is listening to um, some of the people in his team, uh, coaching team, and saying, "Oh, we need to pick some some new blood in here," and he could really, you know, if they bring him in, in the last twenty minutes, maybe he could really rip it up, and and uh, maybe maybe we'll see some some wonder tries if they if they win the battle up front and have ball. But you know, we shouldn't rule out the um, the Italians. We shouldn't rule them out. No, definitely not ruling them out at all. Um, just one word for somebody not selected, and that's George Furbank, who I really feel sorry for. In this, I just think, <clears throat> excuse me, he's been playing super well and probably deserved the place. But with the balance of the team as it is, I think I agree with the selections uh, that Borthwick has gone for. 
Yeah, probably, you know, Stewart's been playing well enough to keep his place, to be fair. Uh, Leicester have been going well. And yeah, I, th- I think it would be too much of the same um, if he was in. I think, let's see, you know, uh, what's great is that probably for the first time in a while, which sounds weird, is that, you know, these guys are under pressure in a different way. Obviously, they're under pressure. They're playing international for their country and, 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 and it's a Six Nations game. But they know that if they don't play well, there's someone right behind them. And, and and that's the way the squads need to be. They need to know that if they're not on it, there's someone to step in right away. And arguably, um, the squad that um, that Borthwick inherited from Jones, I don't think had that because Jones had his favourites, um, clearly. Um, so it's it's going to be a really interesting moment. I think it's good for English rugby. I think it's going to be a lot of... Um, we'll, 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 we'll see some good performances, I hope. Completely agree. Now, I think with the team that England have selected uh, and the fact that they're playing Italy and the way mm. they like to play, sadly for a lot of English fans, I think we are going to see uh, a ton of kicking, especially early doors in this game while the scoreline is t- still close. Uh, with the wingers that England have, Daly and Freeman, they are very good at chasing kicks, uh, as is British Stewart as well. I think Italy from their performances last year, want to try and run everything from deep. I suspect they might be trying to be a little bit more pragmatic this year, but have they got the processes in place? Have they got the ability to do that? I think we'll find out on Saturday because I think England are going to play 100% territory first and be quite conservative, early doors at least. Elko, how do you see it? Yeah, uh, I have a funny feeling we're going to see a bit of a kick fest, to be honest with you. Um and I can, I can understand, I mean, if you, not only are, uh, have England got a couple of good fetches, but they're, they're big lads, they're tall, you know, um, tall, tall players. Um, so I think we will, we'll see a bit of that. What I don't want to see is, you know, when, when, when the, when you have someone as exciting as, as Fabian, that, 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 that he's just chasing kicks. I just think that's ridiculous. He, hopefully at that stage when he's brought on, the game will have, will have opened up a bit. Um, th- those kicks and territory game for both teams will have, will have, you know, uh, taking chunks out of the opposition, and and there will be some kind of fatigue levels, and then that's when you need to you need to let go, and 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 maybe at, maybe at that stage, then a Finn Smith is on. So, um, yeah, I, I would agree. I think both teams will be will be fairly cagey. Um, probably, I was going to say probably Italy more. No, I think I think it will, I think it will be the same. Probably for different reasons. I think I think clearly tactically. We know Borthwick likes that way, so we're going to see that. But I think Casale, I think probably needs to just, you know, put put his his mark on the team, settle them down, and then go. Um, but yeah, I think we'll see a bit of a bit of a kick fest. Maybe yeah, some I mean, top goals from Ford again. It may be. And the thing is, though, England will have chances during that period where the game's settling mm. down. What I really want to see is then go for it when they get that opportunity, that half opportunity. I want to see quality, and I want to see incision. I want to see decisiveness for England to really try and take those opportunities. I think in the sort of the kicking game that we've seen for the last 18 months or so, they haven't been very decisive when when those opportunities have arisen. So that's the key difference I'm looking for this weekend from them. Yeah, and, and look, um just just to sort of echo uh, something that 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 Ugo uh, said yesterday, um very like similar to what you were saying is around uh, you know, as an English fan, an ex-England player, and he's saying people in the room, you know, we just want to see them go for it and play. Um, you know, you, we, we've got to see that because it, it all, if they want sponsors and they want people to come to the games and and spend a couple hundred quid on tickets, etc., we need to see them go for it. Um, the Royal We. And, and, um, and uh, yeah, that's all we can hope. I, I, I think it's good. A, a good, strong English team is good. For international rugby, there's no, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, and new captain Jamie George, that's really all he's been speaking about um, up to this point is getting that connection back with the fans, playing a more exciting brand of rugby. He has mentioned that several times, so I suspect yeah. the the desire is there within the squad. But as always, this is international rugby; they're going to have to get the foundations right first. Um, in terms of Italy, I do expect them to still be quite expansive. You know, I expect them to not go too far away from the DNA of the side that played last year, but try to just not be quite as suicidal quite as often within their 22, which they were a few times last year. Um, so let's sum that up. What, but what do you think at home? Uh, how do you see this game going? 
uh, oh, we need to do predictions first, Elko. Who do we think is going to win? Uh, you go first. England. Uh, I think it's going to be two scores. 11 plus. 11 plus. Okay. I sense after a tight start, we might see um, some decent number of points scored towards the end of the game. I'm going to go England by about the same margin. 34-22. Sounds like a banger. Yeah, that would be a good game, wouldn't it? Okay. But what do you think at home? Do you think uh, we've nailed the right kind of people that are going to play a big part in this game? Do you think the game is going to go the same way that Elko and I think it's going to go? Let us know in the comments down below and we'll join you there for a conversation. Hit the thumbs up button while you're down there. If you don't mind, it just helps other people find it, which is good for everybody. And hit subscribe if you haven't already. So make sure you don't miss out on any of our future episodes. Elko, thank you so much for your time today. Cheers, DT. See you soon. And to you at home, get out and play.